Greetings, customizers. We're moving on to the clear coat phase of our brush painted Slaughter's Marauders vehicles. At this point, all of your paint should be laid down. Uh, and throughout that process, you want to look and make sure that you've got the coverage you want, you've got the effects you want, and do any tweaking that you may want to do. Now, if you had to use different brands of paint, or depending on uh, what paint you used, you might have some gloss paint. What this will help you do is paint over any errors you had or cover any gaps you may have left in your paint scheme. By putting on a clear coat, uh, and in this case we'll say a, a flat coat, it will flatten the gloss paint which will help you apply new layers of paint. What I've found is that when working with gloss paints, doing touch-ups can be difficult because now even though you painted on a flat surface, you're now painting on a gloss surface. So by applying a flat coat, you can put some gloss paint on and then rework it. That may not seem to make much sense to you, but the cool thing with gloss coats is that you can bring up and bring down the sheen uh, of your vehicle at will. Um, and what I'll do is I'll refresh your memory uh, about the different kinds of clear coats available. But before I do that, I wanted to say uh, thank you to everybody who subscribed so far. I think that's fantastic and thanks for joining me on this. If this is your first video with me, welcome to the channel. There's plenty of videos and tutorials to look at with more to follow. Um, and uh, please like and subscribe. So let's carry on with some clear coats here. Uh, just like we talked about with the acrylic and the enamel paints, there are acrylic and enamel clear coats. Um, from my experience, most of the enamel clear coats have been out of spray cans, um, but I could be wrong. I haven't tried the full gamut of available uh, clear coats out there, and there's always new products coming out all the time. But for the reasons we stated in the first video about uh, health concerns and whatnot, there is a plethora of clear coats available in different sheens that are water-based. These are a few examples here. I've got Modern, uh, excuse me, Model Master Acryl, which is water-based, uh, and it's a gloss clear, so it'll be nice and shiny. I've got Vallejo Satin Varnish, and it's 100% acrylic resin, so that's good, it's also water-based. And I have Volley, uh, Vallejo Polyurethane Matte Varnish. Now, when you hear terms like matte and gloss and flat and satin, they all mean different things, and unfortunately some of them mean the same thing, but it's the way that company chose to label their product. The best way to do it is if you stick with one brand, try their matte, their satin, their gloss, whatever it is range they offer, and see what it does to paint colors. Um, certain flat coats or dull coats will completely knock down or flatten any gloss paint. Uh, and in some cases, the more you apply, the flatter it gets until it's completely flat. Uh, in some cases, not so much. Uh, I have not found a hard and fast rule for that, but what I do know is that putting on gloss coats, or excuse me, clear coats, um, you can move it back and forth along that spectrum of shininess uh, to get it to where you want to go. Uh, and don't be afraid to put on more than one coat. The good thing about gloss coats, or excuse me, oh man, I keep saying that. The good thing about clear coats is they are easy to apply and it's the same, the principles kind of are the same as when you applied your primer coat. You're covering the whole thing. So you don't have to worry about the fanciness of your lines or anything like that. Another effect that happens uh, with putting on uh, clear coats is it can actually help blend the colors together. Don't ask me how, to, <laughs> how that works. Um, but it's kind of a thing, and some clear coats can even uh, darken your colors. So what will happen, and that's not to, that's more of a, a point to note rather than a caution. So in this case, I've actually done the top of this vehicle already, um, just to show you the final effect, and we'll go over the application shortly. But what it's done is it's taken my paints of various sheens, and it's, for the most part, to be 100% honest, unified them in sheen. I could probably go over this again to really knock it flat. Um, and you may find that if you have a really gl shiny gloss paint next to a really flat paint, you might actually have to clear coat them individually to try and bring them up to a uniform standard before you then uniformly move the level of sheen up and down on that. Um, and I talk about moving the sheen up and down, that's just to find out where you want it to go. 
Uh, and that will be based off of personal preference. Um, with the different levels of shininess, you have dull, matte, satin, flat, uh, semi-gloss, gloss, and what's called aqua gloss or liquid gloss, where it looks like it's basically wet. Um, you'll have to decide what you want to do. Uh, for gloss coats, if you look at a lot of G.I. Joe vehicles, it really all depends, and some of them even have different sheens on them if you really study the subject carefully. Um, in this case, what I found most of the time is for stuff that's been clearly painted, so something like Tiger Force or Python Patrol or Slaughter's Marauders, they have the, the base coat of the plastic, and I, I created that effect by painting the inside that dark Tamiya green. Um, which is the same color as out here. So that's the base color of the plastic. Meanwhile, the other colors are painted on. Um, to review, what that means is if I were to scratch this on the real, if this was a real issue, uh, a real sold toy, then I would just reveal more green, dark green plastic. Yeah, there would be some scuff marks around it, some lightening of that gr dark green from the stress on the plastic. But if I scratched at this, I would reveal that color because it's the color that the plastic is. And same thing with this, I would reveal that color. So it has the sheen of dyed plastic. Um, some of those vehicles were very shiny plastic, uh, especially from the modern line as well. It's a very, very shiny plastic. Um, and sometimes you have multiple sheens on the same toy, even when it's just the, the dyed plastic. So in this case, I compared it to the uh, links that I showed you in the previous video and it's pretty flat and honestly when I think about camouflage vehicles I don't think of them as being shiny because that seems to defeat the purpose but we're talking about toys so if we're looking at replicating that exactly like I'm trying to do then I'm gonna go with a satin basically something a little bit shinier than a flat coat um, and using Vallejo's polyurethane matte varnish has certainly brought me good success, uh, but I'm still at that phase where I'm not 100% sure that I'm happy with the end sheen yet. So that all comes from experimentation and application. So what we're going to do here is, uh, based off of our previous painting lesson, as you can see, I've applied the camouflage wrap all the way around the vehicle. Uh, I'm going to use some matte varnish on here and I'm going to show you how to apply this stuff. So the first thing like any other paint product is you want to give it a shake and I'll do that off camera so that way you don't get air sick. Now just shake it up and you can even do the wake up if you remember that you hold the bottle upside down keep your finger over the cap so it doesn't fly off and just I'm striking the bottom of the bottle with my hand and what that does is especially with acrylic paints, a lot of the pigment can settle to the bottom, so even if you shake it, it's not enough, is you're smacking it out. So think of it like a ketchup bottle. And then in this case, um, Vallejo likes their squeeze tubes, but I like screwing the cap off and taking my clear coat out of the cap or straightly out of the bottle. It doesn't really matter, it's your choice. And if you'll excuse me for one second, I just have to go moisten this brush. I'm actually uh, traveling on the road right now for work and I have some downtime so I brought this with me as a project and because I'm not spraying anything it becomes infinitely more portable so another uh, another advantage for brush painting your customs and it's interesting because in doing these videos um, I've been relearning some old techniques and trying new techniques um, and I've done all three kinds right now so I've done we're doing hand brushing right now and I've done the spray can and we're going to move on to doing airbrushing which is what I normally do anyway. Um, and I've got to say that once you upgrade to something like an airbrush or even if you do spray cans there is definitely a place in your customizing world for doing hand brushing techniques. Um, so don't certainly cut yourself off from um, any of the techniques once you kind of hone in on one. There may be some projects where you have to do it the other way. So I've loaded my brush, and again, loading the brush means you've got, in this case, we'll call it a medium. You've got the clear coat or the medium um, within the bristles. It's not just heaped on top. And just like applying the primer coat, you're just gonna work the brush back and forth. And when you get into gribblies there, you're just gonna wiggle the brush around inside to get it in all those nooks and crannies. The nice thing about clear coats is that even though they're clear, because they're likely going to be a different sheen than the paint you've put on there, you'll know when the, dry, when the clear coat dries all the spots you've missed, especially if you're using a flat coat, because 
uh, if the paint underneath was somewhat shiny and you paint it flat, it's going to stand out. It's going to be uh, shiny or flat depending on what you messed with. So that's all we're doing. It's that simple. Uh, and you're just making sure that you cover the whole model. Some of this stuff you can get brush strokes with. Um, it's, most of it's self-leveling like the paint is. Um, I find that it tends to get a little streaky. So um, all that is is sorted out with more clear coats. Um, and just a little a reminder, if it hasn't become evident to you by now in your project, that brush painting is the, if every technique is done properly, brush painting puts on the heaviest amount of paint on here. So the paint is the thickest on this version of a, of a custom. And that can affect some of the uh, functionality of some of your action features, like pop-up guns if you have to slide a rail on something. Um, so like I said in, a, in the previous series is be prepared to lose some of the functionality or the playability of the toy when you're customizing it. Um, if you're fine with that or you find a clear coat that's hard as a rock uh, and you get no damage, then that's fantastic. Um, so it helps that if you do a custom is to write down a list of the colors you used. Uh, I'm trying to do that, but I do enough of them uh, in a row of the same schemes like Tiger Force or Slaughter's Marauders that I just put the colors aside uh, and I do other hobbies often enough that they're never in the way. So uh, maybe write down the colors you used for your custom so that if sometime down the road you have to touch up or whatever, um, you know exactly which color to go back to. Because if you forget and then you have to rediscover that color, um, if you're only touching up a spot, it's not such a huge deal, but then you have to go through the, all the effort of finding that color again. So that's all there is to it. So I'm gonna finish this off camera and then we'll, uh, we'll have a little chat about things when we're done. So keep going and make sure you work that brush and that you keep it moist while you're doing this whole process. And check your work. And you may even find sp uh, spaces that you need to touch the paint up, in which case, no problem. Switch to a paintbrush, make sure your water's clean, and touch up the uh, required area. When you switch back to primer, or excuse me, when you switch back to a clear coat, you'll want to uh, clean your water again, because any clear coat will get tinted by the water, the, the, the pigment in the water. So you'll end up almost putting a, what's called a wash on there and it'll highlight all the details and you may not want that. So carry on with your brush strokes, keep it simple, keep it moist, so to speak, and uh, we'll talk to you in a bit. And there we go. I've finished clear coating the entire vehicle. I uh, found some places I had to touch up paint and I'm still looking for those. Um, but for all intents and purposes, the painting is complete. We've got our clear coat on there and I chose um, that matte varnish and I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, previously when I tested it, I held it up against the uh, links and I had the same sheen overall um, which uh, is satisfactory for me so I can't say too much about it it's it's really simple I mean right now I just be yammering on about absolutely nothing more so than I usually do while I'm doing this but um, that's really all there is to it and I'm just gonna check something here And at this point, it's the, same, it's the same thing that happens with every custom is you stop and look at it and say, are you happy? Uh, and sometimes, you know, don't be shy to say no. You could, get a, you could get to a point on a project where you're just done with it. And I don't mean the project's complete. I mean, you're sick and tired of it. Uh, and that does happen. That happens to me uh, often. Uh, and that's just because, um, you know, certain things go wrong. Maybe I'm sloppy. Maybe I'm just not in the zone. But I feel like I have to keep pushing through and you don't uh, take a break if you need to. Uh, sometimes I have more than one custom project on the go. So, if, you know, the particular project I'm working on, for example, let's say this one uh, was frustrating me. I would put it off to the side and work on some parts for another custom or finish another custom. Um, or sometimes just think about what I'm going to do next. Uh, I'm just checking out a sheen here that I'm not too, too thrilled about. I don't remember if I did a touch up on this area or not but I'm just going to bring it up to snuff with a surrounding area, see what happens. Um, and again, I, I mean, I've said this numerous times throughout the series uh, on the channel here is that, you know, nothing's going to be perfect. There'll be little errors and stuff. Um, 
or you might think something is perfect and then you put it on your shelf and then a, a year later you look at it and, goes, and you say to yourself, oh, I never even realized I forgot to do this or, or oh, I missed a spot there or something like that. Either way, uh, what it boils down to at the end of the day, and I'll, and I'll keep saying this so that way it keeps reinforcing the idea, is that this is all for fun. You're not going to make a custom so amazing that you can sell it for a bajillion dollars and retire. This is for your enjoyment, or if you're deciding to do this for other people, it's for their enjoyment. So do your best work. But uh, at the end of the day, I say it at the end of almost every video, is have fun. So I think we're gonna call it there. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, this is a nice short video because it's just clear coding. Um, in our next episode, we're going to carry on with the best part, right? We've painted it. We've brought it to life. It's looking good, but it's not going to be truly alive until we get some stickers on there. So hang tight. Uh, good luck with your customs and uh, like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next episode. Have fun.